Hello and welcome to Fast Panda Transmission. Yep. Hi guys. <laughs> oh, Shot here. Wait, I, I thought you were doing the whole thing. Was I? Okay. okay. I'll do. I'll, I'll do the whole thing then. Okay. That's what I thought we were doing. This and then this you stopped. Is... Like ah. <laughs> Okay, okay, we'll try again, we'll try again. Okay, three, two, one. Hi, and welcome to Fast Panda Gaming, where we've not had any Fast Panda incidents since 1986. Uh, as we're all in lockdown at the moment, we thought we'd bring you uh, something a little bit different, because we're not able to bring you battle reports, uh, which is a real bummer, because we've just launched the ch channel, and uh, we wanted to bring you battle reports, really. But uh, we're doing something experimental, and uh, so here we go. So we thought we'd start today with uh, Colstrom unboxing because um, I received it and uh, somebody didn't. Yeah, I know. I'm not, bitter. <laughs> I'm not bitter at all. Yep, and that is Storm Shroud who's joining me today. Say hi. Hi, guys. <laughs> and what we'll do uh, is we've got a bit of an unboxing video that we'll talk over and, and spoil. And then we'll have a quick chat about it and uh, we'll see how we go because this is really just an experiment just to try get some content for you guys to watch while you're all sat at home doing it nothing so here we go thank you okay so i'm sure what i thought we'd do is i'd start with the unboxing uh what we've done listener is uh we've i filmed and uh, the unboxing of my copy of the uh operation cold storm uh storm shroud you haven't seen this yet have you no no i, I watched a couple of seconds just to make sure that the video worked for me but yeah i haven't seen this at all so your reaction is what uh is nice and fresh so that's that's uh, in, nice to know yes my je my jealousy is fresh your jealousy is fresh i'm sorry I, I honestly thought that everybody got this roughly the same time i didn't realize that i'd got this quite kind of very early uh, and from asking questions and talking about it on the community a lot of people haven't actually got it yet so uh, no you obviously bribed the right people yeah i i, I paid um the money exactly the same as you but yeah <laughs> okay so here we go so as you can see this is uh the box that i've got i've got the diaphos and the uh free uh miniature as well for ordering both of the things there but we can go through them later another day um and this is the box we'll just go through the single box itself it's uh, I've never, this is the first box I've ever actually bought, so it was smaller than I thought. And as you can see by the wobble in the camera when it hits the table, it's quite a hefty, hefty boom. Oh. Yeah, you haven't you haven't had any of the battle packs that they've done or starter boxes? No, no. And um, I was very impressed. The artwork on the back, it, it, it's quite it's a quality product. They're, they're, they're nice, and the, I'm assuming that the cardboard terrain in here is the the thick stuff that they did. Um, for wildfire as well, rather than the, the very thin cardstock they used for the first couple, which is really yes, nice. It, yes, it is. Uh, and you, you know, I'll show you, I put it together already as well. So I've got pictures of them later. Ah, this is this is me realizing that I could really do being closer up. There we go, closer. Uh, zoom. You don't get that feature with the Mark 1 eyeball. No, you don't. <laughs> So this is uh, and this is me filming. Uh, uh, this is op me opening it for the first time. So you get the Aristea advertisement. They've really uh, been pushing the advertising for Aristea in the uh, in this. Yeah, we, we need to play that more. And and the booklet, that's a nice booklet. I've I've, I've kind of been through it now uh, and, and read the first bit, uh, the blurb that I'm just kind of flicking through there now. It, it um, looks uh, it looks quite. Um, Chunky, is it all in English? Because the previous ones have been sort of half English, half Spanish. Yes, it's all in English. It, all the units are, are described. Um, a few different colour schemes. Be a lady knight. Oh, and it's got that, and it's like that Korean who's who's really a chunky monkey really <laughs> there's some metal in that mate. you'll see later there's some, some metal in that one okay uh, the missions um if you can see that's me looking through the missions um looking at them a bit more closely they they introduce you to the rules as you go on so a nice straightforward 
job. So, um, well, that, that's definitely something I've picked up. Is Code One is is intended for new players and or seems to be aimed quite heavily at, at retailers. The mm. the idea that this is what you need to carry to get people into the game, um, type of thing, rather than potentially rather than veterans like me and you have been playing since first edition. Mm. Um, well, yeah, yeah. That's not. That's not. Actually, I've got. I've got board games with thicker rule books than that. <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad at all. And it's uh, infinityuniverse.com, not uh, the normal website. And the American yeah. really dice. I've got some more dice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure I need any more branded D20s. So I've got <laughs> the damn thing. <laughs> well, I've got three Pano uh, dice now, so I might kind of tap you up for some more Panos if I'm playing Pano. Uh, I can loan them to you. Yeah. Um, there's some... I might buy myself a proper box. I've got to, you know I'm going to. Uh, they're the new style uh, bases, obviously. Uh, this is the Ninja. If I can focus. There we go. That's a lovely free model. Yeah, it could be interesting in Code One, the, the Ninja, because there's not, there's no other sniper rifles either in the box. Um, I thought it was. Or is there, is there one other? There might be. Yeah, the Hudun, the Hundun, might have one. That's what we're looking at there. That looks like yeah. a fusilier. Yeah, it's a fusilier with nice, nice, lovely sized contact areas. And ski goggles. Don't forget the ski goggles. And the ski goggles that were modelled on afterwards, yes. Another fuse layer. But yeah, he's, he's, he's uh, really impressed. Um, even I can glue these together. The size of those tags. The, the models have come on leaps and bounds. They really are good nowadays. That's the last fuse layer. So which one of them is going to be Angus? <laughs> I, I, I'm actually looking out for Angus on eBay uh, at the moment, so I really want Angus, uh, and I might even put some ski goggles on him. For your HVT? HVT, yeah. Uh, that's me trying to work out which one this one is. I honestly can't tell at the moment. <laughs> It's the orc troop. Oh, is it the orc? Yeah, it's the orc troop. He's got. He's the one with the uh, fleece lined, uh, the fur lined coat. Bless him, he gets cold. Well, uh, a yeah, detail over, on over his over his heavy armor. Yeah, because uh, it matters. The detail on them is phenomenal. Yeah, no, I don't think it's a stretch to say that they are certainly, if not the the best, certainly one of the top two or three metal models out there. I think this is the Nuckin. Yeah, looks like it. Come on, focus. And that, that looks the Yujing one. That's the Hundun, isn't it? Yeah, he does have a sniper rifle. Yeah. Again, with fleas lined. And that's the Korean, the Chunky Monkey. There's some, there's some metal in that one. The Jun Jack. Yeah. This heavy flamethrower. Yeah, and his and his thigh pads, knee pads, chunky separate knee pads for some reason. Yeah, they probably a little bit of moulding thing. They they look considerably <laughs> look, easier. I can feel some weight in that. Yeah. <laughs> they look considerably easier to attach than the old Dakini shin pads. Oh, definitely, definitely. The Daufe is that one? Oh, the Daufe, yeah. Yeah, looks yeah. Looks like the Dow thing. Nice, yeah. It's got a nice um, pattern to its cloak. That will take like a as well. little dimple, little dimpled bit. Yeah, I think I noticed it through the bag. That's why I got it out. Yeah, because you, you get the same pattern on the one that came in um, Beyond Red Veil, vale, um, which is the the first of my using models I painted up because I do like it. I know it was uh, wasn't the most popular of sculpts when it came out, but I think it's lovely. And this one's the Spitfire, so I can see it getting a lot of table time. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! <laughs> <Claude>. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, I'm not using the using in these, am I? I'm using no, the I, I am. Yeah. <laughs> alert, the camo guy with the Spitfire might be getting a lot of use. Mm. That's the Greelang. It is. That's a skirmisher with his shotgun, is it? Yeah, boarding shotgun on that one. And the Zanshi that look exactly like the old Zanshi, but with coats on. I actually, uh, I think the Zanshi. The female Zanshi with the hood up, who's reaching up to adjust her hood, is possibly my favourite sculpt in the box. It may not be a really powerful model, but it's got, I think it's a really nice pose. It's a, uh, characterful. I think the one I've got now is the female knight. It comes the, in two, yeah, it comes in knight, two bags. The Lazarus knight or the knight of justice. There's two, aren't there? The, uh, the hospital or... Yeah, it'll be the knight of justice. Is it? I can't go on focus. Yeah, because it comes in two bags. It's two bags worth of that one. That one looks like it might be a bit tricky to assemble. Yes, it does. Uh, but it does look... I like the female knight model. I think it's gorgeous. That's a great yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's the other half of the bag of the knight uh, of justice models with a big base splurge. And this is the hospital. Hospital. Yeah. The again, again, there's and lots of stuff. Some Lazarus or something. But the hood is lovely. I'm looking forward to doing the pano on these, uh, the pano Siania, um, in these. I really am. Really nice models. Um, there, there's a sentence I never thought I'd hear you say. I'm looking forward to doing pano. Yeah, no, yeah, no. It's it's a strange <laughs> time. It's 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 the. Uh, World emergency that's uh, coming out of me. <laughs> we all need hospitals. Yep, and this is an awful lot of cardboard, and it is that thick stuff. For getting started, though, it's great. I mean, it's nice, oh. thick card stuff. Yeah. The designs on them are lovely. Um, I've, got, I've got a picture later on of, of me uh, set up the board because I've put them all together. Um, trust me, that's not very easy to put together one handed either. No, they're based on the. the traditional um, designs that Bandu, is it Bandu I use? Yeah. They were initially, the Bostia put up templates for them. And you need a way, way back in the day. Yeah, that's how thick they are. Yeah. Nice and chunky. It's, for, getting, for getting started, I think it's wonderful terrain. Um, and that's the, that's the paper playmat that is now glued to a board. So when we play it on the channel, it should look okay. Um, the reflection's not too bad on that uh, video, so hopefully I'll, I'll get it. Oh no, yeah, there's some reflection on there, so we'll have to see how we get on. But I'll, uh, but he's glued to a board already, so hopefully we can do the introduction games and, and show you how to uh, play it. Not you, as in Stormshroud, you as in the viewer, obviously. Uh, get, you get some more templates. And the tokens. Rulers. Yeah, and tokens. New style tokens as well. Yes, they've got um, a d double side to them, as you can see. You'll see in a, a second, they've got a double side to them, which is which is nice. And I think definitely think I'm going to actually use the, those tokens in our battle reports. Yeah, this this six sprues, if you want to call them sprues, of terrain, and a couple of. Um, why is there a hole in the middle? That's what I'm pointing out. I don't know why there's a hole in the middle. So you can centre it over a, a model? I don't know. But, uh, on those, for example, those regular orders, uh, yep. when I flip it over, you'll see that it then says unconscious. Which I thought was nice. Explosion. That's good use of it's good, good use of the space on the spree. You get two tokens out of one. One space. Makes sense. Yeah, so I think I'll probably use those uh, orders anyway. And I wonder why there's one uh, token, especially for uh, Lankai. Lanky? Lankai? It's because he's a, I believe, he's um, a HVT type target in one of the missions. So oh. if you didn't buy the bundle that included him, you use the token instead, I think. Um, okay. Yep, that's it. So that's that's the unboxing. Very jealous. 
Yeah, sorry. Uh, right. I'm not going to sorry. It's, it, it, it's given me a start. Um, and I've had it a day now. Um, I've put all the terrain together. So if we have a look at the uh, terrain. Yeah, so yesterday I spent um, playing with the new models and putting together the scenery. So as you can see uh, on the screen now, you'll see uh, all the scenery uh, and the play map all put together. It's really nice. Um, pig to put together one handed, but it, it went together okay. And you've got options. So each one of those buildings, you can make two different coloured buildings. So if you got a, if you pick up the terrain set when they release it independently, you don't have just identical. No, so. yeah, you you can have four large buildings all different. So uh, and and what you've got in there plus another terrain pack would easily be enough to do a a four by four table. Uh, to get maybe to get a bit start, more to get you started. To get you started definitely. certainly. You've got yeah, enough definitely. scattering, enough buildings in there. Or if you've got one of the previous um, yeah. sets, um, or if whatever you can pick up off eBay, because uh, I'm a big advocate of picking stuff off eBay, you know. But it's lovely stuff, especially the thick, the thick stuff. It stands up on its own. The only you can't go in and out of it like you can on uh, other uh, terrain and uh, that we have. But you can go up and round it and on it and stuff. So it should be okay. Uh, the mat itself, 80 centimeters by 60 centimeters. Um, so it's like two foot wide by three foot, not even three foot, is it? No, uh, not so two foot by three foot in, in round numbers. Um, but for the few models that you do get, I think that's that's plenty big enough for the introduction games. And uh, like I said, we'll we'll go through them all for um, uh, and put the videos on uh, the ch channel as soon as we can. It looks, it, it looks like it's a, a nice little set. Gluing the mat down, I think, was a, was a great idea. Um, so it won't flop around and as you move past it, you catch it and send it flying. Yeah, it, it's it's for the channel, so I thought it was yeah. worth doing. Is, just out of curiosity, is there a poster on the back? No. No? no it's blank. No, it's blank. Uh, that's why I was kind of happy um, to glue it down, to be fair. That looks good. Yeah, uh, and cardboard terrain, the actual, um, if you go into uh, a cardboard terrain photo. I, uh, yep. Yeah, it's, it's made up of that stuff. Here's a, here's a better picture of one of the buildings. Evil Mines Corp. That's good. It, 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 that thick cardstock stuff is great for getting you started. Mm. Uh, and if you've got a lot of tables to put together for a tournament, it's relatively inexpensive as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of pleased with it. I really am. Right. Uh, where would you like to go next, Storm Shroud? Oh, well, what do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about the rules? Have you read uh, the rules? Well, I tell you what, we'll do. I don't, don't know if you know what the backstory is for uh, Operations Calstrom. Uh, would you like me to tell you what? It, well, give you a yes, synopsis. Yes, Uncle Claw. Could you tell me a story? Let me tell you a story. If you sit down and and and, and get yourself comfortable, um, and I will butcher the names <laughs> as per usual. Uh, basically, uh, the it's uh, on a planet called Svalhalheimer. Svalhalheimer. Come on, Storm Sir. How, do you, how would you pronounce it? I go with Svalharima. But... Svalharima. Okay. I'm I'm not Nordic, so my butchering is as good as yours. <laughs> Please, if you are listening to this uh, and you know how to pronounce it, pop it in the comments below. So this, the Svalhalma planet, <laughs> was found by Pan-Oceania, and uh, they were found that it was rich in the neo materials, mat uh, metal, and the stuff that you need for space travel. And so they colonized it. And the Yujing, uh, being the Yujing that they are, didn't want to miss out. So they went and colonized it as well on the other side of the planet kind of thing. Um, much to the annoyance of Pan Oceania. Uh, they had a fight, fights about it, scrubbles about it. Um, the O12s got involved and really everybody's got annoyed at each other. Uh, so there's a lot of tension on this planet for 
ever since it's been colonized. Pan-Oceania think it's their planet. Uh, the Yuzhing want the resources. Um, it's, it's, it's the tale as old as time as two uh, empires are wanting the same resources. So um, years went by and things settled down and, and, and escalated and settled down and the uh, town of uh, Kaldstrom was uh, in a uh, Pan-Oceania uh, area, territory, and it kind of grew and grew and grew. And being the, as the planet was such rich in uh, materials and minerals and wealth, it uh, attracted uh, privateers, <coughs> not private, not pirates, but uh, private companies going in to mine the place. And uh, after a while, a large corporation called Mines Corp came in, started buying them up and overtaking them with um, threats uh, during the day and mercenaries at night. Um, so a lot of companies just disappeared uh, to be taken over by Mines Corp. And Calstrom very quickly became a corporate town uh, owned by the evil Mines Corp. I think, I think it's evil. I think I can say it's evil. And Mines Corp took over this whole town and area and territory and they started mining and they got very prof profitable. And uh, in that um, corporation, there was a specialist, I forget the name, I could probably find it la later, uh, Dr. Razia, I think is the name. And uh, what they, what uh, that doctor has developed is a way of finding these veins of precious materials uh, easier and more precise so they can concentrate on the uh, higher concentrations uh, uh, of minerals and, and more money and that kind of thing. And if they carry on doing this, this they're going to be a bit of a shift in power. So the Yuzhing need that uh, information device or whatever. They either want nobody to have it, they want the information and Pan Oceana not to have it. They uh, will try and kidnap the uh, doctor uh, and her, all her intelligence or at the end of the day everybody dies uh, and nobody gets anything so Eugene wants this data uh, wants this device so they can find the uh, ores better than Pan Oceania and Pan Oceania wants it because to find it better than the other one so it's all to do with money at the end of the day and that really is the kind of synopsis of Karlstrom it's a backwater frontier town owned by a corporation and they've developed this device that uh, Pan Oceania and Yujing both want. Simples. Yeah, nice and simple. Nice and simple. Um, there was a nice little, nice little empire squabble between Pan Oceania and Yujing. Then an evil corporation came along to stir things up. The blue guys have the thing. The orange guys want the thing. They're going to get it. <laughs> So that, that's the, that's the basic background. It goes into a lot more detail if, when you read it, but uh, that's the synopsis. See, I do read things, Stormshroud. You read the story. Did you read the rules? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I did have a, a read through the quick start rules that they put up for download. Once I could get on the site after it, uh, after the popularity had uh, had waned a little bit. The r quick start rules for Code One don't look a million miles from the quick start rules we had for, for N3. Um, I, yeah, I have I had a quick flick through the, um, because there's new rules on each mission, I've had a quick flick through, I've not actually read anything. Um, and there are little things in there, like um, you measure, uh, when you move, for instance, um, where is it to say? Uh, when you move, you measure the, uh, the distance you can go and then you move your model to wherever you can go. So you can go moving, you can measure in any direction, then move your model rather than... You don't have to declare your intent you and then... Declare. You, yeah. you, you do still have to say move, but then you can kind of yeah. move wherever you want to. The, the bit in movement I noticed was you can fit through gaps that are half the size of your base. So you can squeeze through narrow gaps between buildings now. I've not seen that bit yet. I, I, I trust you. And of course the critical's in there. Um, so it's two saves rather than the other bit. No more instant win. No more instant win. Well, as uh, 
it's been said before it, it can be uh, a blessing and a curse if you've got a two wound model you could now lose that two wound model if you say fail both saving throws yeah I, I think it's a nice it's a nice change it keeps the critical mechanic in there it still gives you the chance of winning the roll uh even if your target numbers are lower um but it's not it's not so devastating that one critical will just rem just remove something completely without you having a chance to do anything you've still got your armor save yeah okay you're yeah. making two of them but you've still got a chance to to counteract the fact that you've taken the critical and if you've got a tag um and you're not automatically going to lose a wound it's going to be you, yeah you, you can't you've got plink, that five armor and yeah you can't plink a tag to death with crit mining uh, so I'm, I'm kind of uh, looking forward to digging out achilles again yeah, I mean, I think models like Achilles are going to really benefit from that. Um, but uh, I, I actually, having read the, the quick start rules for Code 1, I'm quite looking forward to giving it a try. I don't know how much I'm going to play it in the long run, uh, outside of teaching new people to play the game and getting them getting them started. Um, I'm not sure it's going to... I, don't know, I haven't got the book that you've got to, to read, though. I'm not sure it's going to have the depth that I, that I enjoy about Infinity. Um, yeah, it, it hasn't. You've, you've got fixed. You know, you've got the fixed units that come in the uh, the boxes, and um, I think Code One is it's it's great for starters. And for me and you, uh, we are probably going to we'll go through all these missions, show the uh, viewers at home all uh, the missions and how to play them and what to expect and all that kind of thing. Um, and we'll uh, try and explain exactly what's what's happening, so it's easy for you to follow at home. And we'll go through them all, but I don't think we'll play Code One um quite as much we'll do it every now and again uh when we get a, a guest in we'll, uh, who wants to start playing it will play code one first and all that kind of thing but uh, for us i don't think we will play it because there isn't that depth uh that the full game gives us it's probably the same reason i don't play um guilty so uh, you're, about, you're about to swear aren't you in my presence <laughs> I play the evil GW. Uh, I still play. I still play games. Works games. Um, I don't. Play, but the thing is, we, it's. It's. Uh, I don't play Kill Team. Uh, if I'm going to play 40k, I play 40k. I don't play Kill Team. And I think it's probably going to be the same for this. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm hopeful though that for N4 that uh, we're not going to see a huge seismic shift in uh, in rules. Yeah, um, and just to note, it is the uh, 18th of April. Um, <laughs> Uh, today so the, uh, I, if you're listening back from uh, in the future then this we don't know what n4 brings us completely and all that kind of stuff so uh, hopefully it'll all be good i'm sure it will what's the worst that can happen i'm not answering that <laughs> <laughs> well thank you very much claude for showing me all the stuff that's arrived and that i will be receiving in short order yeah um do you want to have a close look at the models uh when i go do you want to go through the, the actual images so we can yeah we can, we can we can go through the, the pictures that are gloriously painted that mine will never look anything like yeah mine either um so if we start with a group photo of the panosienia wow, isn't that lovely they are yeah they're beautiful they're, they are works so, of art <clears throat> that female knight um he's, he's got a bit of a weird when i first looked at it i thought what a weird pose to be stood in but then i worked out it is actually a woman and um their hips do go like that so it's not sexy it's just you've got different hips <laughs> but i think it's gorgeous the way it's, 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 it's a great action pose there's yes yeah, so much movement in it uh and the, and the hospital with a hood over is uh, uh it's very thematic um I, I do like that. It's the bases. I'm going to do a, a winter base for mine as well. I think. I don't think yeah, I've been, I've been experimenting with snow for the bases of mine. It's not something I've ever done before. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm, I'm not going to do mine uh, blue and blue and white as they're doing there, but it's definitely going to be a white. I, I, I like the Crusader type theme to them. So the white and the red cross definitely. But I don't know what the other color is going to be. Um, might be even a silver. Uh, looking at it, I can do like a silver armor, like uh, they used to be, like knights uh, in silver armor with a with white. What, what do you think? Yeah, that could work. Yeah, um, yeah. 
Was, you gonna, uh, you, you'd go full non-metallic metals and do the reflections in the metal, or <laughs> no? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be painted to a tabletop standard. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm going to have to do some experimental with colours, but because as you know, I don't go for the standard colour loadout because I know my my models are never going to be painted as good as these, so I'm not even going to try. Uh, I know that's defeatist, but let's face it, let, uh, I want something a bit different. There are probably very few people who can who can match and hell standards did he paint these I don't know. i'm not sure if he painted them or, or somebody else but they certainly have that that type of look to them don't they and um, I, I don't like the edges on all the black either never have done but anyway that's just my personal choice so the next the next photo is uh fusilier pointing his uh, combi rifle in the air goggles on his forehead that's a pistol i've not seen before is that a pano type pistol is that a new sculpt it could, I think it is a pano style pistol. I can't remember if any of the other models I've got have are holding a pistol out of that. It's been a long time since I looked at any of the pano that are in my drawer of shame. Well, if you know at home, uh, let us know in the comments below. Uh, whether I'm talking at my uh, rear end. Um, so the, the next one. The next one is the orc. The, the lonely orc. Uh, I, I remember. <laughs> His nice fur lined coat. I just, I, orcs appear in every pano list, and every time I build a list, messing around with them, I always find out, well, I'd rather spend those points somewhere else. Um, I mean, they have, they certainly have a place. I mean, they, the in the fire teams for Varuna, they're great. Um, but uh, in vanilla pano, in the shock army, I always struggle to to include them, I'd rather take them out and use the points somewhere else. And by the way, that's definitely a Pano pistol because he's got one too. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> What's he stood on? That, that uh, tactical rock's got eyes. Are they eyes or are they gems? <laughs> no idea. It kind of it looks like a, a yellow version of one of those old um, Star Wars drones. You know, the ones that come to Hoff. Oh, the spy, spy yeah, drone. Yeah, the spy drone. Uh, kind of looks a bit like one of that, but to the yellowy. Still, uh, like you said earlier, the, the fur-lined jacket and a heavily armoured, uh, over the heavy armour, that's, uh, that's great, isn't it? <laughs> it? It does look like it's a warm coat, though. It does, yeah, I'd like that coat. Yeah. <laughs> I think he wears it better. What's the next one? Oh, the next one's a fusilier with goggles on, and he's uh, just a, a nice standard guy. Can't, yeah, can't, just like the pose, very neutral, great for a fusilier. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for, for, for a grunt, yeah, you can't. It, it, it's a fantastic model for a grunt. And the next one is a woman, um, again looking over her shoulder slightly. Again, for uh, for a grunt, it's I love the model. That's, it's why, why I love the Corvus Belly so much is the quality of their models. It's gorgeous. Yeah, <laughs> they are just fantastic. Every month is pretty much shut up and take my money. Yeah. And the next one's my favourite, um, and that's the uh, Knight of Justice, the big sword. Whatever she hits is definitely going to feel it tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, and you get the the base on this one uh, is just a big bit of uh, metal. Um, I'm not too sure about my freehand crosses on the cloak, mind, but uh, we'll see how it can do. A lot of practice required. Yeah, but I'm not going to practice. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> What's next? next the no can. Is... Hey? The, the knocking. 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 Reminds me of the um, the locust from Pano. Yeah. yeah. I like it. It's a, it's a nice sculpt. Yeah, it is. It is a lovely sculpt, but um... very, very. Um... Sort of sci-fi action-y. He definitely looks like he's running towards something. What's he got special? Is there anything special about it? Let's just uh, have a quick look. As I flick through the, the book, there's a load uh, at the back of the uh, Carlstrom book. There's all the uh, stats and things. So let's have a quick look so I'll find it. Uh, orcs knocking. Special skills, forward deployment, four inch, mimetism, minus six. Ooh, ODD. <laughs> I understand why they've done that to, to, to break out the skills and, and lose all the nested stuff, but I, 
I still worry we're going to lose a little bit of flavour where when mimetism minus six replaces ODD or TO camo. Um, yeah. But I, I understand why they've done it. I, probably, I, I, I personally, uh, uh, being a bit dim, uh, I, I appreciate it. Yeah. Might just be me being a bit nostalgic. In in, in the N three hour list, he does have ODD. But yeah, he's got uh, he's in a multi uh, multi spectral visor level one. It's also uh, got a boarding shotgun apparently according to this list, but that doesn't look like a boarding shotgun. No, that is that's the Pano boarding shotgun. Oh, good. I've got a lot to learn. Um, the Knights of Justice has got uh, martial arts level two and a close combat of twenty-three. Nice. Anyway, uh, I'm looking at a different thing. Back, sure. Yeah, back back to the pictures. <laughs> back to the pictures. Sorry, I, I got I got wandered I wandered away now. The next guy was the uh, hospital, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, the infirmary. Knight special, of Lazarus. Yeah, special uh, skill of doctor, obviously. And he's whip thirteen, close combat twenty. Whip thirteen for Pano is is practically atmospheric. Um, the fusiliers are twelve. Most of them are twelve. Mm, most, of Pan, most of Pano is twelve. Whip whip is not their strong point. Okay. Well, yeah, the doctor and the sculpt wise, I think it's lovely. I, I really am looking forward to painting that. It's a nice. Yeah. It's a nice open uh, sculpt, so within, there's no arms folded over to make it difficult for me. I can stick it all together in first place and then paint it rather than do part paints and then glue them together. But yeah, I'm, that's, uh, I'm never no, going to get eyes like that though. Uh, whoever painted these, I'm never going to get eyes like that. My hand shakes too much. <laughs> I can't see it. <laughs> Right. Next one, the group photo of the uh, Eugene. Yeah, these, these are these are again lovely. Yeah, uh, I'm still. I'm going to paint that, even though um, I'm not playing Eugene on these. I'm still going to paint them up and stick them in my Eugene army anyway. Well, you've got a bit of free time at the moment, haven't you? Uh, yeah. Can't go anywhere. Yeah, Furblong. Oh, what's the first one? Oh, that's the Dauphin. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah. Dow Fay with this. Uh, yeah, you, you're going to be fielding this one every time. What's not to like? Uh, not a lot. The Dow Fay, uh, yeah. Uh, close combat 19. Uh, physique 14, whip 13. Um, got a Spitfire. He's got four. Yeah, he's got Spitfire. Uh, he's got uh, armor four. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's, he's going to be up there, isn't he? Uh, special skills. He's got camouflage. Dodge okay. plus, yeah, he's got dodge plus one inch, so kinematic. Of, just, just out of curiosity, are yeah. all because you've got all the stats in front of you. Are all the yes. heavy infantry six two? Because this is something that uh, had been uh, said by Bosch, that six six two movement for heavy infantry was going to be a thing. Medium high six two, yeah. Uh, six high six two, yeah. Uh, Hi, uh, there's a something soldier. Uh, that's 4-4, four, four, which is heavy infantry. That's a 4-4. Four, four. Okay. Um, so maybe not all of them, just just a good chunk. I kind of yeah, like it, though. It's going to give... 3-6-2. That's 6-2. Two. Two. Yeah, give the heavy yeah. infantry the mobility by making them 6-2 rather than punishing the medium infantry and making them 4-2. Yeah. Yeah, 6-2. Cool. Now, it's a lovely model. Again, whoever yeah. he's going to belt with that sword is definitely going to notice it tomorrow. Yeah, it's, it's got oh, oh shit! It's also got surprise attack, so it's minus three. Yeah, you're gonna see him a lot. Yeah, with the Spitfire, and I'm gonna get shooting you back on a minus three. Minus six if you count them. Yeah, this is a minus three that he's got, and the in, cover. It, that's minus in, that's in average range and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Oh, joy! <laughs> you're gonna hate him. <laughs> oh. We're talking about the sculpts. The sculpts are very yeah. nice as well. It, it, it's a superb sculpt. Yeah. Lovely profile. <laughs> What's next? Uh, Jack. Next one is, is the Korean. Again, 6-2. Um, he's got a kinematic level 1, so dodge plus 1 inch, as it's called now. But we're talking about the sculpts, and it's again a lovely sculpt. 
he's he's chunky. He's a proper chunky monkey. Yeah. Um, and he looks he looks the warmest out of a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. He's he, 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 a almost big, like thick a orange room, <laughs> orange jumper. Yeah. <laughs> big thick hazmat suit, almost like an old Gamerson. Old Gamerson, depending on your pronunciation. Nah, lovely. Yeah, he's got the combi rifle, heavy flamethrower, um, uh, gun. So both there. Like him, like him a lot. What's next? Next ones are the Zanchi. Grunts. I do like these coats that they've been given, the little fur-lined hoods. I'm going to try to sculpt something similar onto the uh, the old Zanchi that I've got to, so that they all match. It'll probably go horribly wrong, but I'm going to try. Yeah, I've got the uh, the old uh, Zanchi, or um, the, the, I haven't got the coat on. They look pretty similar. And then we go to the skirmisher, the Gulang. Is it the Gulang next? It is the, the Gulang, yep. I like this one. This is another stylish. This is a, a one that's high up on the um, it's got a lot scale of, attitude. Of, of gorgeousness. He's got a lot of attitude, hasn't he, that school? He's, he, he's pumping that shotgun. Um, and you just know he is, and he's just about to kind of dispatch something on the floor. Um, the wind's just catching him, and he's just and he's in a stable stance. Oh, you just action pose. I love that one. I agree. It it is um, again. It's not flashy. It's not a tag. It's not a big heavy infantry. But just the amount of attitude that that sculpt has is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, we're gushing now, aren't we? <laughs> Hi, my name is Stormtrap, and I'm an Infinity fanboy. <laughs> yeah, and I like this Google line. Um, it's lovely. Oh, I like that one. Uh, the next one, Hondun Ambush Unit. Uh, he's got camouflage, he's got minus three, uh, so it's got mimetism and surprise attacks, and that's with its uh, sni multi sniper rifle. It's another nice sculpt. So I'll, I'll really is. like the helmet on this one. I like that banded helmet from the angle that you've got this this picture is taken from. Looks really good. Mm. It will take. I, I got this from uh, this. This is from Corvus Belly's website. Yeah. So. Oh, really okay. nice. What's yeah. next? She's, uh, the tactical rocks is laid, laid on can go uh, in most bases. It's not you don't just need a. Uh, it's a gubbins more than a rock. It's just a. Yeah. It could be a bit of metal. It could be uh, could be anything. Yeah. Yeah. She's uh, she's certainly getting ready to take somebody out. With that um, memetism, the minus three and minus six to hit back. What's the next one? Oh, it's my favourite of the Zanchi. Ah, oh, the the the. the Pulling up my hood. Yeah, pulling up a hood. Again, I just think it's got a nice character. For a grunt, mm. it's a lot of effort gone into that. Uh, a lot of effort. For, for not many points. Well, one point, I think. Are they, are they one point? Then she's. Let's have a look. Yeah, they one point. The code one, yeah, I think they're one point. <coughs> so Which it's just leaves temp. the ninja picture. Yeah, he's lovely. Um, I've, I've had a better look at the model itself, and it's lovely. I'm going to be painting him up. He's, he's probably going to be one of my first ones, and he's definitely going to be a Pano Shiana player. Um, no, I don't think... <laughs> he's a mercenary, isn't he? He can work for anybody, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, just me. He's not me. Actually, just you. He's... Okay. Yeah, just me. Because <laughs> uh, you've already got a sniper. I haven't got a sniper. You do like a sniper too. I, I do like snipers, as, you, as uh, listeners, uh, viewers will know. Uh, very, few, I do like a sniper or two. What's not to love? Stick it, it, is, it is a really nice model. I like the bit of the purple that got into the paint scheme as well. This isn't fair. I'm just sat here drooling now, waiting for my stuff to turn up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sorry, um, because I'm I'm going to start cleaning up, uh, cleaning some of those models up, uh, especially the the, the ninja uh, and the. Uh, female knight, just a uh, knight of justice. I think they're going to be on my desk sooner rather than later. Well, I shall have to clear some space on my workbench so that I'm ready, poised. Okay, so let's have a look at the um, forces now. So the Salva Harum Winter Force. You got that completely wrong because it's. I know. Well, no, not only the pronunciation of Salharema, but it's Winter Force. I always thought it was just cut off at the end, like, because I'm an <laughs> idiot. <laughs> I think it is. It's like they, they couldn't quite fit it all on the back of the armour, so they cut off the CE. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got... Uh, so, can only have so many characters. 
Um, yeah, they reached the character limit. Okay, uh, Salva Harem. Uh, I can't. No, I can't. I just can't. I'm going to butcher you every time. Right. Okay. So, looking at it, we've, this is what we've got. We've got the Fusiliers, which you can have a million of. Uh, in your course uh, fire team and your special fire team. I don't know any of these really. Um, so well, the Noken we've not seen up because until it came out in in um, Coldstrom. So the role they're going to play, I would imagine, is kind of going to be that they're not quite infiltrated because they've got forward deployment level two. Yeah. Oh, so they, they're, yeah, they're all they're kind of like that camo infiltrating specialist that we know and love from N3, but they can't quite infiltrate as far, and they've got ODD or Mimitas of minus six instead. Is there a specialist option? I'm assuming there is. Yeah, they've got hackers. They've got two types of hackers and a forward observer, so they're definitely going to be that type of specialist. Quite pricey, though. At the moment, they've got, uh, yeah, they've got uh, hackers, uh, kill hackers, mine layers, forward observers, multi spectral visor. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what they've got at the moment. This is true at the moment, but this this um, table is for uh, the N3 sectorial. Yeah, yeah, going forward. Yeah. What else? Two infirmaries of St Lazarus, who what, can join fusiliers, can form Harry's with Knights Hospitaller, or can form a duo with the Knights of Justice. Again. I'm I'm completely new with this army, so yeah. it's going to be ex lots of experiments for me, um, and it's generally going to be <laughs> what I think is cool. <laughs> it's a new sector. It's going to be lots of experimenting for everybody to begin mm. with. Mm. Um, if you've got any I suggestions think... at home, just drop us a, a, a comment below. That would be great. It'd help me out a lot. Is it for for his points? He's He's not too bad, I don't think. 25, 26 points for uh, a decent doctor. Yeah. And he's got a monofilament close combat weapon, which can always be hilarious. Yes. Chop off a limb. <laughs> What's next? The Karu special team. What's them? What are they? No idea. That'd be interesting. Uh, uh, maximum security team, Van Vagar. They are uh, grunts by the look of them because you can get five in a core Harrison spirit. N not looking at their points cost, they're not grunts. They're, uh, they've all got um, albedo, so they can't be seen by multi spectral visors on turn one. They've got super jump as well, so they're bouncy. And bioimmune and multi terrain, yeah. Um, then we've got the Salvaharima. 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 Misses. Misses. Nisse's have been around for ages. Um, in fact, I need to pass you that sniper model of mine that I have that I don't need because I have a spare multi sniper Nisse. Oh, right, that cool. I picked up. Might be able to uh, put a, a woolly jumper on it. And... It, it, it's a small Horizon Nisse. It comes with the co a coat anyway. <laughs> they, they, they've been wearing these long furry coats since before it was cool. <laughs> hey. <laughs> no, they've got uh, their MSV2. They're, they're nice, solid, medium infantry pieces, especially with the sniper rifle. It's a bit expensive, but ballistic skill 13, mimetism, MSV2. Yeah, they're, they're great snipers. Okay, um, let's let's go. Let's fast forward to the kind of interesting things. What's what would you say is the interesting things on here? The interesting things on here. Um, ooh. Because well, my I, I'm looking at it, I don't know any of them. You've had the army before, and I haven't. Had, I've not have, never had this uh, a pan oceania force. Um, the things that I'm interested in are the new things, understandably. Uh, the good, solid things that I, I know work well from from playing them in the past. Um, Misses are really solid. Um, bulleteers, bulleteer armbots. They are combat remotes with ODD. And you can get one with uh, one with the Spitfire, one of them with the Spitfire, one with a heavy shotgun. I think the other one is. Um, so that you know, ODD on a Spitfire is quite tasty. Um, I'm looking forward to the because I've got the Diaphos pack, uh, which I've not opened yet. We can do a, an opening for that and another um, 
transmission. But uh, the Troll Hunter Gunner Lundmark, um, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. Yeah, he he, he has <laughs> um, he has a very Space Wolf type feel from the model. I don't know if that's just me. I know. But I saw it and that's all I could think of. I saw it and I thought Thor. Um, that's okay. What, when I first saw it, I saw Thor. Not the um, Marvel version of Thor, but the actual Thor from Myth and Legend type Thor. An actual, the actual God of Thunder, not... N yeah, not, not um, a Disney version. Um, I, I did... Uh, the, the model for him I do quite like. I think he, it's, a, it's a nice model. Um, the trench hammers that they've been that have been on other things I haven't been a fan of. That one looks nicer to me. It looks more in, more in proportion. I'm not a particularly a fan of the ones on the um, Tartary Armoured Core models. So the, one, the ones that look like RPGs welded to a stick? Yeah. The ones that look really <laughs> like a 40k orc. Those ones, yeah. I'm not, they, they don't do it for me, I'm afraid. Mine, mine have all been trimmed off and being converted into axes. Is there anything else on there that's, uh, that's noteworthy that you know of? Um, standing it shouting out at you? Ain't it shouting out at me? Uh, Troma Docks and Machinists, because they're finally getting new models. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, and the Yotam. He, what's not to love about the Yotam? The what's armor. He He's. It's a tag. It's oh. got armor 10. So in cover, it's got 13 points of armor. Is which means. That? Is it the is that the tag with the really horrible um, vest on? It's like yeah, big square armor panels over the shoulder and oh, yeah, torso. Oh, yeah. you don't like it? No. Oh, okay. I don't like I, that sculpt. I do. I do. I, the Otum's uh, is the the uh, pano tag I, I I like the most. Um, and he's he's immune. He's immune to not immune. I think one's still going to be fails, but yeah, in cover he's got thirteen points of armor. You can't be crit mined to death anymore. Hang on, I'm just going to have a quick look, see see if it is the Jotam. You keep chatting. Um, no, I think Jotam's a, a cracking tag. Um, I like the Locust, personally. Uh, I think it's a slightly underrated. I don't see it on the table very often. Uh, he's going to be competing with the Noken, though, for, for slots. Uh, his stats are relatively similar. Yeah, it's the one I don't like. It's the one you don't like. <laughs> okay. Yeah, with those massive shoulder pad things with big vest on that looks like it's from his dad. No. <laughs> well, not every model is to everybody's taste. No, so. it isn't. Um, uh, and it's not. I've seen this tag's been around for a while though, hasn't it? He is quite. He's quite an old model though. It's, it's aged quite well, I think. Compared yeah, to better the, the other old tags. Compared the, to a lot of the other ones, yeah. Yeah, the other old tags were definitely bubble one. Um, <laughs> that was awful but um, yeah um, hopefully it'll be a nice t new, nice new version of this one but I can see why he's got armour 10 his, big, his dad's vest on yeah give me a sub to shift though now the, this, I, I think the, the winter fall gives you some really nice options for and, and, and don't forget that this list this, the, all these options that you can see in front of you are just for code 1 um, so N4 you can have a lot more uh, no, isn't this the N3 list because you don't have fire teams in Code 1? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Stand corrected. But still. I, I, I still think the uh, fact that they put, they put both Winter 4 and White Banner into M3 for veteran players like, like us to use between Code 1 landing and N4 actually coming out is a, a really nice thing for them to do. They didn't have to do it. They could have just left us in a limbo land um, for a few months. So I do appreciate Corvus Belly taking the effort to do it. Um, uh, and at the moment, we don't know if Corvus Belly is going to be sticking to the released uh, promises because of um, uh, world events. Um, yeah, so events things beyond could be, their control. Things could be delayed. So, yeah. Yeah, so I, I, do, I do think it's nice that we're getting this. Come on, let me have a look at the Yujing now. Yujing ones. I, 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 can, I recognize some of these. Um, I, I want to know what the Blue Wolf Mongol Cavalry is. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. That's a new tag. It's, actually, it's in. If you go to the N3 Army list, it is in there. The stats are in there now. I don't look at stats. I look at models. You, you oh, know I, I I look at what's cool and what's not cool. That's, uh, that's, based that's on very the true. 
Well, okay. Well, the stats for the Blue Wolf Mongol Cavalry uh, have me very interested in seeing the model for it as well. It's a it's a slightly smaller tag. It's only silhouette six. It's got an an AP Spitfire, an armor piercing Spitfire, a heavy oh. flame, a heavy flamethrower, and an acrylite cannon. So the glue missile. Glue yeah. yeah. Um, it's got ECM. It's a manned tag. It's got fatality level one, so that's a damage fifteen Spitfire. Full auto level one, hyperdynamics level one, kinematica level one, multi-terrain, and obviously for this season of ITS, it's obviously got its tactical awareness order, and it's still got courage, and it can form a duo with stuff. And you can have two for eighty-nine points each. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to seeing that model. I, 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 I do I'm like hoping, attack. Yeah, I, I'm hoping that they kind of go um, for. A really nice sculpt on that. I'm looking forward to seeing that come out. Um, yeah, I'm going kind to of jump in on that as soon as I can see it. And and we should see it sooner or later because that is going to be the tag for Code One, as I understand as well. Because every faction looking at their release schedule is going to have similar boxes. So you're going to get your support box, your drones box, and you're going to get a tag. And I believe that the tag that they're going to get is going to be this one. So hopefully it won't be too long until we do see it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the stat line for that has me very interested. The remotes are nice. I can't quick zip down the remotes. There's um, some of, some good remotes in there. Some I've there's, just painted up to. There's a new one as well. The Yao Fang Long Ya. That's mm. that's, that's a new. One. Yeah. But yeah, I'm looking forward to them. Um, the other thing is Tiger Soldiers are in there. Love a Tiger Soldier. Well, you know I do. No, no, you don't love our tiger soldier. You love a ti you live like three tiger soldiers landing all over the place. <laughs> yeah, yes, I do. <laughs> I've got to admit. Yes. Uh, my name is the Claw, and I love a tiger soldier, or more specifically, three. <laughs> well, there's lots not to love. If one is uh, good, more must be better. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, when, when there's, if you're going to have a gap in your army list. For some that somebody that's very clever, you storms out, can add up and notice that there's one model missing. You might as well have a massive gap. <laughs> then you don't know. I'm looking for. I, I'm looking forward to collecting this army as well. Um, I'm I'm looking forward to, give it to, to using it as a, a chance to paint up the various using bits and pieces I've acquired over the years. So obviously I've got the stuff from Red Veil. Vale. Uh, a couple of years ago, somebody bought me the. Um, ISS starter box, so I've got some evil imperial agents to, to paint up, um, and a couple of other individual models I picked up when they came out that I really liked, like uh, the Sun Zay with boarding shotgun. I wonder if Shang-Chi Invincibles going to be like. I'm looking forward to them getting a new sculpt, because um, the, the, the old guy's a midget. He's uh, <laughs> literally. I, st I took him out. I, I, he's in my archive box of models. I took him out and stood him next to to the new Sunze, and he basically comes up to his hips. <laughs> <laughs> he really is a pipsqueak. They the stat. They used to have really nice stats. They used to be a really good hacker um, with their six points of BTS, and allowed them to shrug off when the the, uh, the hacking attack didn't quite go their way. Um, so yeah, if they get a nice new sculpt, it's definitely something I'll uh, be interested in trying on the table again. The problem I'm having with the, the Yu Jing though is every every time I play with a list, it comes out at sort of ten models max because there's just <laughs> so many toys in there that I want to include that are so expensive, which is which is really weird for me. I'm not used to playing limited insertion lists. I am. I know you are. <laughs> I've been playing US Ariadna for a while. So, well, before that, it was um, Spiral Core, where I was like 14, 15 models. So going down to 10 just feels like chopping off one of my arms. I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I set it up <laughs> and you just walk straight past it. Fair enough. Oh. Uh. Right, and, and with that bombshell, um, I think we'll wrap up this special uh, Colstrom um, edition, and uh, we'll probably come back to it and, and talk about it a bit more in other transmissions. But uh, for now, I think that's uh, we're about an hour, which I think I'm sure you're at home quite bored now. Um, we'll have a quick look round Studio B.
uh, just to wrap things up and i would just like to say thanks for listening and uh, happy wargaming uh, anything you'd like to say storm shout no thanks for listening guys thanks for putting up with us whittering for about an hour uh, stay safe do what we're all being told to do um and then we can all get out and start rolling dice in anger sooner rather than later all the best thank you Hey guys, Storm Shroud here from Fast Panda Gaming and I just wanted to quickly put something on the end of this to show that the claw wasn't lying when he said Studio B is currently under construction. This will be Studio B. As you can see at the moment, we don't have a window, we don't have a roof, so there's not a lot of gaming going on in here. Uh, and also to address one point from, from, from Claw's little tour of his studio. Knowing the rules does not count as cheating and I refuse to be called a cheat so claw cut it out all right guys stay safe social distance do all the things that we've been told to do and hopefully we'll all be back to gaming soon bye